one with poor protection. You still have time to make it. I hear the room to find it. I made it. You can make it. Amen. Amen. Uh, verse one. I'm gonna. Uh, I, I I really like this lesson. I remember when my pastor taught it. I think I first got here. This, you know, when somebody. Well, you know, I I want to talk about it a little bit before we get started. You know, when we're in a dire emergency, when you need help sometimes, it just seems like they don't get there fast enough. Amen. But this is basically what uh, this lesson is about. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to read verse 11 and 1. He said, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Now we know a little bit about Mary. You know, Mary the one anointed him <laughs> and wiped his feet <laughs> and, and used her hair. Amen. Amen. So we you know that there what I that's what I call humbling yourself. Amen. So when you do things like that, and so here we say uh, verse two he says, and it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair who brother Lazarus was sick. Amen. Amen. And so I believe that, you know, uh, Mary knew exactly who to go to when, 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 we, when we need help. And that's the same way we need to be. We need to know who to go to. We can't go to our friends. We can't go to our spouses. We need to go to Jesus. And it's in verse 3 it says, And therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, whom thou lovest is sick. And so when I looked at verse 3, it said, thou lovest. And it said that she knew some kind of way that uh, Jesus had to know something about him. Amen? Because you just don't say that, who thou lovest. Now, I know I was looking at this, and I'm going to get some response from it. Jesus loved everybody. Amen? Amen? So it was just a special type of love. And if, before we get any further, any comments, uh, Number four, verse four, it said, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Amen. And that there's that, that a lot of a lot of input to be put on this, you know, because Jesus, you know, he can speak things that they'll happen. But, you know, it said that when Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death. Amen. He said that the glory of God, you know, that God going to have to get the glory in everything we do. We have to continue to say, thank God. Glory goes to God instead of saying, I did this and, and, and this is what I did. Glory is to God. If Jesus would have did it the way they wanted to do it, then they, then they would not have been able to see the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any comments on that? Praise the Lord. Okay. Yeah, I, I just love how the, uh, uh, the writer here you know, reminds us how Jesus wasn't in a rush. He he wasn't in a rush to get to his friend Lazarus when he had heard the news, right? And so when when Jesus said, But the glory uh but for the glory of God that the Son of Man might be glorified, they didn't understand what he was really saying. They didn't understand what was happening, uh, uh what was going to take place, but Jesus had to wait so that it basically it can be manifested what God needed to do. Amen. He can, um, Mary said, they just didn't understand. Pastor, I saw you had your hand up. Yeah, you know, that's what you said when uh, Jesus, being a close friend of Mary and Martha, comes and finds his friend, uh, their brother Lazarus, dead. You know, he, he's there and he's delayed so that God's will can be done. And, uh, but like Deacon Murray said, you know, the Lord does things that we don't always understand why he's doing it. But we have the, the ability to look back and see that it was for God to be glorified. And, from, and after this point of this miracle occurring, Jesus' fame went throughout all the land. Amen. So he was he was still working towards drawing people to Christ, drawing people to himself. But when he gets ready to go to the cross and, and rise again, people will take notice of what he's doing. Amen. And uh, like Pastor said, you know, that it, it, it was for the glory of God. You know, and so, you know, like Dick and Murray said that, uh, you know, <laughs> they didn't understand that what was happening, you know. Most of the time when we, we, we don't understand, uh, you know, the, the Bible says that, you know, says his ways are not our ways and, not, and our thoughts are not his thoughts. So the way we think it should happen, if, if we, 
we think he should just jump up and respond right away, but that's not the way it was meant to be because he wanted to make sure that God gets the glory. Amen. Amen. And if he would have healed Lazarus from where he was at, <laughs> then it would have just been a, a uh, this says it would have just been an ordinary uh, solution. Right. And so anyway, at verse five it says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Amen. Amen. And, so, and so Jesus loves us all. But that's really special when he actually said he loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Now some would say, okay, now why did, if you love someone, what, why do you take so long to respond? Well, I, I've been in a situation where I thought that something should have happened a lot more faster than it did. But, you know, it, it did work out. God made it work out. Because I thought that that airplane should have been lifted up much higher before it almost hit the ground. But that wasn't the way God wanted it to happen. He wanted me to see that you almost died here. Oh, and you almost died. And I'll never forget that. If he would have just fixed it right up there, I would have thought nothing about it. But today, I still think about that. And he says in verse 6, it said, we, hear, we heard, therefore, that he was sick. He had about 10 days still in the same place where he was. Amen. He said that. <laughs> so I, I would have been thinking, okay, what, what, I, I would probably, you know, we would have been on, you know, we are microwave uh, around here. Everything had to be done real quick. We probably would have been on a cell phone or something saying, hey, are you on your way? Did you leave? Amen. And it said that he waited two Amen. more days. Amen. Two more days. <laughs> and as I was reading it, it, it was done for a reason. He could have healed Lazarus, but when he waited two more days, it says in verse 7, then I said, that said he to his disciples, let us go to J Judea again. Now, last week, we read about, you know, he had to depart from there real fast because they were trying to kill him. Amen. And so the disciples are probably saying, now wait a minute, right. do you want to go back into this hostile here? But it says, when I was reading the lesson, it said that last week, it said that <laughs> His time had not come. Right. And so they didn't understand it, that if my time had not come for that airplane to crash. Amen. Amen. And I like the way he said it, that he was going back and so the disciples didn't understand it. As Pastor always said, as long as they've been with it, they should have known something about it by now, but they still didn't. Any comments on that? Yeah, he, you know, he said he waited, you know, and then he moved. So, you know, God has a time for all things. We have to get on his timing and wait on the Lord. That, you know, how many scriptures in the Bible does the Bible say wait, 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 wait? Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. Watch and pray. You know, he's telling us to pray, God, just, you know, because we because God doesn't move right away on something. Doesn't mean he's not moving on it. Amen. You know, we have to learn, and that's that is a that is a part of us activating our faith and trust confidence and hope in the God we serve that uh, here it is again, he that shall come will come and he's not going to tarry. So we just have to, you know, he was he was trying their faith to see where they're at. And we gotta have that faith in order to proceed to serve God. So that's what he was he helps us along. He was helping them along. It don't feel good. Right. It's not always the easiest thing to do. But God is God knows what to do to help us and build and increase our faith. Amen. And our pastor, Deacon Murphy, he passed. He was building our faith and, and patience. We have to be patient, Deacon Murphy. Yeah, and you know, something else that I, I pulled out of this that I didn't see before, in, in the fact that the disciples that were with him were learning a lesson right there, like in, in real time, right? And so how many times that, you know, we've been in life where people around us and our surroundings, we're, we're moving in a certain direction and a lot of people around us can't understand why we move that way because there's a purpose behind what, what we're doing and sometimes we have to learn and understand that you might not always understand what someone is doing but if they're living for Christ and they're moving in the direction of Christ just wait, amen? Just wait, wait. And Deacon uh, Murray said that there was a reason for it just wait, they were moving the disciples was also learning and that's the way we are. We learn it as when things are happening, we don't understand it, what, why it is. But as we grow in, in faith and grow in the Lord, we'll start to understand things 
mean, things that I didn't understand 10 years ago, I understand now. Didn't right. make any sense. Now, if I would have just quit, I was patient. I wanted to learn more about the Bible. I, 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 I realized you couldn't understand everything in the Bible in one year. <laughs> but I wanted to I mean, be patient. And like I said, that we're growing, we just have to wait. If, you know, the my, you know the cell phone don't, don't you know the cell phone don't come on in two seconds. You know we gotta get rid of it. It's too slow. But in Esther, we didn't have cell phones years ago. We would use the beepers and everything else, <laughs> and they was fast enough. Now everything's too slow. But we have to be patient. And in verse eight, it said, "His disciples said, say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and go without." either again. Amen. And he, they remind, he reminded them that, you know, last time we were there, you know, they were trying to make you the Messiah. They were trying to make you something that you didn't want to be. Amen. And you had to kind of, you know, go another way because, you know, that was going to mess up your plan. Right. And so they could not understand why would he want to go back into a hostile area. Same with us. You know, if something is happening over there, uh, you know, if you tell someone I'm going back over there, they're going to say, well, wait a minute. You know, there's a lot of risk and a lot of stuff going on over there. But Jesus had been reminding them that it was not his time. It's not our time. Uh, someone told me uh, last night, uh, I told them I was going to church, and they said, really? <laughs> I thought you were doing it online. I said, no, we're going into that. They felt I was kind of crazy, D. Amen. They said, now, you know, that's dangerous. But here I am, B. It wasn't my time. Wasn't your time. And so that's what he's letting them know. In verse 9, it says, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? And with many men walking in a day, he stumbled not, because he sees the light of this of this world. And he was letting them know that he was the light of the world. Amen. And that he was he was reminding them that if you're walking during the day, you're in the light. If you're walking in, in, in the, at night, you're in darkness. You darkness. And, and he was reminding them just exactly who he was. Amen. And because I think that one of the lessons said he was the light of the world. Yes, sir. So if you go in the light, you know, he was letting them know that I am protected right. by the Father. We are protected. Amen. Amen. And so that's what I like, you know, is uh, I, I like his uh, faith. Said. It's a faith that I, I just believe that it's going to be all right. Deacon Murphy. Yeah, I mean, even if you go back to verse 8, right? When they when they ask the question, they ask that question in a little bit of fear. Like, wait, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Wait, you want to go back over there? Man, last time we was there, they, they, they tried to kill you. But I love how Jesus comes back and his response to them is a question. You know, he, he, he always, even though we know he has the answer to everything, but he turns around and just asks them a question that, to them, it might not have seemed like it had anything to do with what was going on, with, with, with the question that they just asked him. But he, at, at the same time, Jesus was teaching them. He was meek, he was calm in everything that he did. And there was a purpose behind everything that he did. So the fact that he turned around and asked them a question that had that seemed that it had nothing to do with the question that they asked, to me, it just stands out as amazing as Jesus just continued to show you know, like you said, he, that, you know, he was the light. And he just reminded them that, hey, I don't, you know, if, if it's light time and you walk, you can see you're good. If, that, if you're walking in the dark, you might fall. But he was the, the light. Amen. Amen. If, if, you, if you follow me in the, in the light, you know, you'll be okay. If you're walking in darkness, in other words, if you're not following my commandment, you will stumble. Amen. And, and that's what we have to look at. We can't worry about... Uh, what's happening, uh, you know, like uh, on the road, you know, uh, you know, it, it, I, I just believe it's going to be okay. That's just what I believe. Pastor, do you have a comment? Yeah, you know, they talk about going back. Go remember the last two lessons dealt with uh, him, those, those one, not believing who he was and not walking in darkness. So now he had an opportunity to go back and, you know, Jesus was the one who, who, who works miracle signs and wonders to show him that he was who he said he was. He goes right back into the same environment and raised the ladder from the dead and all those who, who uh, uh, could not receive him as the light of the world were able, hopefully some were able to turn their lives around and see that he was who he said
said he was. So yeah, so you got he was building, he was building the foundation, knew what he knew what was coming next, praise the Lord, and knew how to help people along in their path towards salvation. Same way he does with us. God, the Bible says, uh, I know what it says, save yourself, but we don't save ourselves. God saves us. And God says, plan, God, he, you know, all things work together for the good and them that, that love the Lord, that are called according to his purpose. He made, He put us in all these processes and plans to move before so that we can grow in grace. Amen? Amen. 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 In verse 10, I, would, I think we just covered it. Said, but if a man walk in the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. If we walk in sin, that's walking in, in the night, we're walking in darkness. There is no light in, it, in you. There is no hope for your salvation. You have to come to God and ask him repentance, as I always say, and get it right. Verse uh, 11 said, These things said he, and after that he said to them, Our friend lies asleep, but I go that I may wake him out of sleep. And verse 12 said, Then said the disciple, Lord, if he sleeps, he shall do well. And so they actually thought that he was, uh, you know, taking a nap or something, and that thing was the disciple said, Well, asleep will do him well. Amen. You know, so let him sleep. And so, so he, uh, uh, Jesus had to eventually had to tell him. And then Jesus says, and I think in, in verse 13, he says, How be it Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. And, and he was saying that, you know, that Lazarus was dead. And he said in verse 14, Lazarus was dead. And so, uh, the way I was reading it, that as we would look at it, probably that if someone was asleep, I know someone told me that someone was asleep because that's what their parents told them when when their relatives died, that they were actually sleeping. They didn't understand what they were saying. Instead of saying he was die, he had died, they would just say he was asleep, and that's what the disciples was under the impression that he would eventually wake up. And it says in. In 14, it said, Jesus finally said, Lazarus is dead. Right. Now, as we talk about all this, we went through this. Why did Jesus wait? <laughs> it said it took a total of four days before he arrived there. Lazarus was already dead. Amen. And so as I was reading, it said that they believed, the Jews believed that after so many days, your right. body become decomposed right. and that there was no chance of you ever making it to heaven. And so, the, in other words, it was a hopeless situation here. Amen. That not only was Lazarus, now he's dead, that he took four days to get here, and, the, and there's nothing, nothing that you can do. Because there, and so, and Jesus actually, uh, it says that, you know, <clears throat> that was the first time that he raised someone from the dead. But <clears throat> this one here was the, was the last miracle that he performed in the book of John. And so, <laughs> I, I, I'm i trying to visualize it, that if someone's dead, I've heard some people waking up before when they died. I don't know if they were dead or not. I mean, maybe they just kind of blanked out a little bit. Now. <laughs> but if, 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 he was dead, if he was dead for four days, he was dead. But Jesus, we, know, we all know what happened. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And if he would not have done it that way, then God would not have gotten the glory. Two days he waited, and they wanted to know exactly why it took so long. It took him two days to get there. And now he raises Lazarus from the dead. There is no doubt who he is now. Right. There is no doubt in my mind, because I ain't never seen a man raise nobody from the dead. There's no doubt who he is. And he, he, this was all done that Deacon Mary said that God would get the glory for the purpose. We didn't understand it. I would not understand it. I wouldn't understand it. Why would you wait two days? If I call on my doctor to come to see me, and he takes two days to see me, and he right around the corner, he don't have, have any patients or anything, then I'm going to know what is his problem. 
right? Mm -hmm. Because especially when he get there and they and then my child is dead, now I really don't understand it. Right. But this was all done for, for the glory of God. Jesus knew exactly what he was gonna do. He knew exactly how he was gonna do it, and he knew exactly who was gonna get the glory. Any, any comment? Yeah, he, uh, go ahead, uh, yeah, he, he just wanted to, you know, again, verify. He, had, he, he dealt with them where they are. You know, Jesus dealt with the people where they are. He knew that they knew that the people were dead. That he already raised Jairus' daughter. He had already worked on other miracles. Elijah was raised from the dead. But he wanted to make sure that he had, when he, ex he exceeded beyond what their expectation was. After three days, that's why Jesus had to stay in the ground for three days himself when he died. After three days, on the fourth day, that means that, sure, like you said, it's a hopeless situation. And that's exactly what Jesus wanted to do to show that he is he is hope in a hopeless situation. Amen. And he was able to get the glory out of the situation. But again, he's in that place where those people are doubting him, and he's trying his best to do the work so he can, he can get them to understand who he is. Amen. Anytime I throw your hand, a uh, deacon, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, and and not only that, you know, in, in the same situation where we live today, where we wait on things and we might not see it uh, uh, manifest in the time that we want it to do, uh, and then all of a sudden it, it happens and God blesses us and takes us from A to B or A to Z, it builds our faith. And so I can only imagine the disciples that were with him, right? At that point, their faith. Uh, they already had some faith, but their faith increased a little bit more even at that time. Amen. I think Deacon uh, Mary said, you know, at that point when when the, when the Lord does something for us, you know, we have a, a little faith, but when he does something that we know without a doubt that this was not supposed to happen. It builds our faith. I kind of said sometimes, you know, when you're running down the street with that, that, that light on the gas thing, it, it, that yellow thing is blinking, you know you ain't got no gas, and you don't have no money. And all of a sudden, you know you ain't supposed to be able to go no more than three miles, but yeah, all of a sudden, you get home. Fill that with God, because any other time, you ran out of gas. It said, verse 15, it says, and I am glad for your sake that I was not there to the extent you may believe. Nevertheless, let, let us go unto him. And so now, Jesus is telling them that it was not his intention to get there early. Amen. It was not, I was not going to get there early. This was not a mistake. I planned it this way. I was not going to be there when you wanted to be, because this come, you're going to see exactly what I'm, what I'm saying. And then, you know, and it said, verse 16, we all know about Thomas. It said, Thomas said something sarcastic. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. <laughs> but Thomas is very faithful, but you know, Thomas, you know, he, he, you know, he always say, you know, and they call him Doubt Thomas. I, you know, I, I'm not gonna believe you until I see it. You know, and so Thomas says that, "Let us also go." But the fact that I was reading it, it said that Thomas still went with. Amen. And that's what we have to do, even though he didn't believe what he thought. He said, "That's what we have to do, even though it doesn't look right, even though we may not understand it. We have to continue to do what the Lord asked us to do." It didn't make sense to some people for us to do things, but we do it because that's what he wants to do. This builds my faith to do things that not I'm not comfortable with doing. Amen. Amen. I mean, it, it's easy for me to do things that I, I, I like to do and kind of know how to do. But when I do something that, you know, you know it, it, it could not turn, it may not turn out right, and, and I just believe that it's going to turn out right, that builds my faith. Any, any comments on that? Yeah, you know, Thomas, you know, speaks of um, his, you know, the young man, the, the ruler came to Jesus and said, Lord, I believe and help thou my unbelief. But Thomas, the writer, John, gives us this list of comments that uh, is, even though this is going on, there was still a, a hint of unbelief, but yet God did not allow that to keep him from working. And that's one thing we have to understand is that, uh, you know, even though Jesus said when he went to his 
hometown, he didn't do many miracles right. because of unbelief. But just because you don't believe does, don't, does not stop God. That's right. The, your belief is for your benefit. It ain't for God's benefit. Your faith is for your benefit. It ain't for God's benefit. So God will do things in your life whether you believe or not. But then when you do believe, as he said with the woman, in one instance he says, uh, 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 Lord, he, no, with the centurion example, the, the man said, Lord, just speak the word. Amen. And Jesus said, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in all Israel. So in that instance, because uh, Jesus was already on the way to, to heal, to heal the, the young person. Right. But the man stopped Jesus and said, no, Lord, you ain't got to go to speak the word. So then we see how your personal faith can uh, amplify the ability of God to work in your life. Praise God. That's why we got to continue to build our faith, continue to build our trust, continue to build our hope in him so, so we can have everything that the Lord wants us to have through the faith that he's given us through his word. Amen. Like the pastor says, unbelief is not going to stop God just because we don't believe. That's right. His, his, his word is not going to come back for us. And I like that. But we have to believe in it even if we don't understand it. And that helps build our faith. So there's a couple of things before we get with I want to go over some of the practical points because they were very good. Is that because of human sin, no one escapes sickness and death? John 11, 1 through 3. Amen. And, and, and number two, it says, God uses an unlikely thing such as death to bring himself glory. Yeah. And so we probably can look at it, uh, probably what's going on today in the world. Amen. COVID 19. Amen. You know, God is going to get the glory. We got nowhere to go to now, but I mean, they don't really know the cure. So you got to come to God. You got to ask Jesus. And it says, number three, the Lord works on his timetable. I say that all the time. We should not insist he work on ours. So just because he didn't answer one of your prayers doesn't mean that you should give up on it. Amen. Amen. It, it's going to happen. I mean, it's something I asked for five years ago, but I still believe in it, and it happened. And number four, it says, things we should not deter, deter us from the things we know God has for us to do. And basically what it says, if, if you're called on to be uh, a, a deacon, a preacher, don't run from it. Don't run from it. Amen. Uh, I, I still think back when I was the deacon, I, I, I no matter what, I can't get out of it. I'm deacon. I die deacon. Amen. But it's okay. okay. Number five, we need the light of God to perceive things in a spiritual way and accomplish his purpose. Once we walk in, and he is the light, he is the light. Once we walk in the light, then we'll be able to see things the way they're supposed to be, and we'll be able to follow his command Amen. and obey him. Once we, uh, it's easier to steer away and to go into darkness uh, to do things that we know that's not right. Amen. And next thing you know, you're doing everything. In fact, that you're in the world. Deacon Murray, I see it. We have a comment online. And uh, Sister Cassandra says that uh, Jesus was also trying to assimilate them to the fact that he had power over death so that when he, when he rose from the grave, they wouldn't be doubtful. Amen, amen. Very good point, Sister Cassandra. He has power over death. Amen. And he does. He raised Lazarus from the dead. That is power. And, and, the, and the last one, verse 6, is sometimes God allows us to experience difficulty in life in order to increase our faith. And that one there, that's what I really like. Sometimes there are things that happen and I believe that if he took care of everything that we, this is my first belief, if he took care of every problem that we had and we didn't have any problems in life, then a lot of us wouldn't even think about coming to church. Amen. Amen. But I have to come to church for the last time if I tell my friends about, I used to so call friends about some problems I had that they, 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 they didn't want to hear that. Amen. And so, and I, I tell the Lord, hey, just help me. 
Amen. Yeah. Deacon Mary. Yeah, I was just th thinking when you were talking about that last one, you know, the Bible tells us that we go from faith to faith, right? Yeah. And so we haven't experienced everything yet. We haven't lived, you know, if you keep living, you'll, you'll experience more things. And so while today in your walk in Christ, you might have the strongest faith about X, Y, and Z, but, but you've never dealt with F, G, and H. You know, you haven't been there. You haven't, uh, uh, you have no idea if, if you've never lost a child or a parent or, or you've never been in a situation where you were hungry. You know, if you haven't been through certain things in your life yet, you know, and I'm not speaking that to say that you will, but you don't know how much faith you have in something until you start going through it. And so sometimes we also have to look back at others and say, well, you might have gone through something and somebody else is going through something totally different. Their faith might not be there yet. And so we just need to encourage one another. And that's what Jesus was always doing. He had a purpose, everything that he did. And he always encouraged us, encouraged them along the way. Amen. You know, as Deacon Murray said, sometimes that you you have to go through things that, and others that go through things that uh, you will realize that sometimes people, that everyone goes through something. And I was looking, reading an article about this lady that lost her husband and she complained all the time against Jesus and she just didn't understand it. She said she was on a ladder and fell flat on her back with nobody to help her said the Lord told us so. Why do you talk about me like that? At least I spared you. She, that turned her way around. We have to experience things. The thing is that I'm still here. Oh, amen. I'm still here regardless of what happened. And I, I, I could be gone. The average person that I knew when I was in the armed forces, they're not here now. I get a magazine every three months with the one that was in. And so somebody in that magazine I know that passed away. So I, <laughs> I, you know, I allowed us to experience difficulty in life, to be broke, like you said, to be uh, homeless, to be without food, to be without money, to be without transportation. I came to Praise Temple with no transportation. That's it. Look at you now. Me and Fred was friends. Me and Fred. Me and Fred. Yeah, I had a bus and I had a, I had a month to pay. But I, I always believed that one day it was gonna be I, I was gonna be able to drive something. Really? But I had to go through that. Amen. So that if there are nothing else, I pray that everyone and someone was able to, to get something from this lesson here today. And uh, or what we're gonna do is uh we have anyone here for physical offering. All right. And we're gonna leave our own path to wanna say something. Let's welcome him with a hearty amen. Amen. Right? Let's welcome him with a hearty amen. 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 Praise God. Thank God for Deacon Gould this morning teaching and preaching the word of God. Amen. That uh, Lazarus, uh, Jesus responds to a dire need. He is still the one we look to to respond to our needs today. Do not allow uh, anyone to deceive you, praise the Lord, but Jesus is still our source. Amen. He uses a lot of different resources. Praise God. But the most important thing is that when we are in need, amen, we need to go to Christ just like uh, Mary and Martha did, and God will give us some resolution. So just be encouraged today out of the word of God. We thank God for you who are with us online, amen, and just want to remind you, praise the Lord, to uh, don't miss your blessing and uh, do your part and uh, do the $5 for offering this morning, amen. Amen. Praise God. But we don't want you to miss your blessing. We're here at the church. We're able to make it here today. Some are able to. Some are not. Just due to the weather. But we pressed our way in order to meet the need, praise God, that you have of, of the word of God. Because we know it's going to take the word of God to continue to help us move forward. So we just give God praise for you. Give God the glory in Jesus' name. God bless. In bless. Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank our pastor for those encouraging remarks. We, we those tomorrow sometime. Just to you know the faith of one. And uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead on and stand for dismissal. God.